The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Gala webinar series. My name is Manuela Noske, and I'm the Communications Manager at Gala. Gala is a global nonprofit trade association that enables communication and business across languages and cultures. We are headquartered in Seattle, Washington, in the United States. And today, uh, Viveta Jean will present an MTK study that was undertaken by her company, Intertranslations, in which they carefully analyzed time, cost, and quality to understand the benefits of using MT. We will kick this off in just a moment, but before I do that, I need to go over our housekeeping items. Everyone's lines are muted to cut down on any noise. If you experience any technical difficulties, let me know by using your chat box and I will work with you to troubleshoot them. If you have a slow internet connection, your audio may be disrupted. If that happens, use the number listed on the GoToWebinar panel to call in using your own phone. We are making a recording of this presentation and you'll be able to find it following the presentation on Gala's global website. All participants will receive a link. If you have any questions or comments, please type them into your chat box. We will get to as many questions as we can with the time remaining after the presentation. Next, let me introduce our speaker today. Viveta Jean is Translation and Localization Industry Specialist at Intertranslations. With more than 15 years of experience as a linguist and vendor manager, she recently decided to combine her expertise and know-how to become a language solutions specialist. With a master's in translation and new technologies from the Department of Foreign Languages and Interpreting at the Ionian University, her main focus is to promote the new trends in the industry where translation skills meet MT technology. MT tools and post-editing techniques are amongst her key fields of interest. And without any further ado, Veleta, I'm going to hand the microphone over to you. Thank you, Manuela. So it is a great pleasure to talk to you today. As Manuela said, I'm a translation and localization industry specialist uh, within the translations, and one of my fields of expertise is post-editing. Our topic is how to measure MT output. So I will use a case study performed by Intertranslations to present our MT output evaluation method. Let's start by thinking of some of the top challenges in MT. Post editing is here to stay as it is becoming a standard practice in our industry. Taking this for granted from a business perspective, there are different questions and concerns arising. Are there any evaluation methods of the MT output? And if so, what are the evaluation methods to measure MT output and any subsequent reductions in time and money? How is post-editing productivity measured? And how is post-editing quality assessment applied in the modern localization pipeline? So let's shed some light on these queries and take a look at our approach to MT output evaluation. There are many methodologies that organizations use to identify, qualify, train, and evaluate post-editor performance. Our approach to MT output evaluation is based on final output quality evaluation, meaning post-editor's productivity, analysis of the over-edit or under-edit of the post-editor's effort, evaluation of the percentage of empty suggestions used versus empty suggestions that are discarded in the final output. Here is the framework of intertranslations case study. We leveraged all the existing tools and methods to evaluate productivity and quality of empty output for a US-based software company and reflected these results in time, cost, and quality. The statement below outlines how our evaluation method was invented. Tab quality is undisputable. We founded our method on the ISO 17100 4i principle, TEP. The TEPQ evaluation method consists of four elementary actions, the initials of which form its name. So we have T for train empty engines. 
This step means that we either start training an empty engine from scratch or we use our customer trained engines. Both cases are covered in our study. The method of training the empty engines is not in the scope of this presentation though. The letter E goes for evaluate empty output from a productivity and quality aspect. After having created or trained the empty engine, we follow an evaluation process to evaluate productivity and quality of the empty output. The letter P of step Q is for proof results of 40 to 60% reduction in cost and time using machine translation. The outcome of the training empty engines and evaluation empty output steps is a productivity and quality report reflecting the results in cost and time. And the letter Q is for quali qualified quality comparable to TEP. Quality of post-editing is secured with the use of post-editors having specific profile and training to provide the service. Quality follows the ISO for post-editing 18.587 and is comparable to TEP. So how is the TEPQ evaluation method performed? The TEPQ evaluation process is a vehicle with three wheels, TEP productivity, empty output productivity, and quality. All three run in parallel. To run the TEP productivity process, we need to have a source, perform translation and revision, measure the productivity per hour of the translators, and complete the process by obtaining the TEP documents. To run the empty output productivity process, we need to have an empty output, perform post-editing, measure the productivity per hour of the post-editors and complete the process by obtaining the post-edited documents. To run the quality evaluation process, we need to have an empty output, perform LQA reports, measure the errors of the empty output as these are annotated during the post-editing process and complete the process by obtaining the LQA errors rates. The next step, is to run a comparison of the time needed for the TEP and the time needed for the post-editing. As a last step, we use the number of LQA error rates as a verification vehicle to cross-check the empty output productivity rate. And the final deliverables are our productivity and quality evaluation templates. Now, a prerequisite for the performance of this evaluation method is the mutual agreement with the customer on what is the expected quality of the post-editing process, meaning that we need to have an agreement on the framework of the post-editing. This is an important stage for the interpretation of the results. I will now start describing the preparation phase of our case study, and we will examine the factors attached to each step one by one. As explained, this productivity approach calculates the difference in speed between translating from scratch by translators and post-editing empty output by post-editors. Now, let's consider the evaluation method as a recipe. To succeed, what is needed is the correct ingredients in the correct amounts. Here we can see the ingredients that were considered for the productivity test of our case study. Design, delta, content type, test set, tools environment, number of post-editors, and profile of post-editors. So let's start with the design principles of the TEPQ evaluation method. And let's ask ourselves, what is the most undisputable and solid ground in terms of translation evaluation? TEP is the answer to this question and is the key to our evaluation method. TEP is the foundation upon which we can base our theory and practice. So the design of our productivity test is based on a comparison of the empty output against TEP. 
In the realistic environment, we did not use self-reporting where post editors fill out a table reporting the number of words that they post edited, and then this divided by the number of hours they worked. According to our research, this system is prone to errors. Instead, we used an automated system which automatically calculates the productivity while post editors work and provides the average number of words per hour. No confidence scores are used. This means that the scores that are automatically generated by the MT system, which are potential indicators of quality and productivity, are not used in our evaluation method. This is due to the fact that there is not yet enough research on the links between scores and actual post-editing productivity. So the basis of the design of this evaluation method is that post-editing quality is comparable to TEP quality according to ISO 18587. As you can see on this slide, the mathematical symbol of equivalent two is used to show that TEP quality is equivalent to post-editing quality in terms of fluency and accuracy. This is the statement that governs this evaluation method. The second ingredient of the recipe is the delta. The delta between the translation productivity and the post-editing productivity is an important measurement in this evaluation method. We test different vendors and technology combinations and understand the delta between each scenario and the human translation output. The rationale is that individuals will benefit to a greater or lesser extent from MT. The delta should be calculated per linguist and then the average delta should be calculated. Content type. Content type or specialization field is an important factor. MT engines have varying degrees of success with different content types according to TAUS guidelines. As we will see, we tested three content types based on this assumption, legal, marketing, and technical. In order to understand the results of the case studies, let's identify what are the characteristics and prevailing translation methods for these content types. Legal documents. The legal content is not highly creative. It requires precision quality and human translation by lower linguists, uh, which is recommended in this case. We are talking about highly visible documents in the case of marketing documents, fully branded and creative content. Normally, transcreation is recommended and post-editing is not advised due to the lack of creativity entailed. For the, for the technical documents, software and electronic documents are the customer's product and as such highly visible, but precision is more important than creativity in this case. Normally, human translation by experts is recommended. So applying MTP to these types of documents in the case study reveals interesting and differentiated results that bring down the statement that MTP is not good partner for high visibility documents. So let's keep this in mind for later. Now let's have a look at the test set. What is considered for the test set? The language combinations we examine the complexity of the source language, the human reference translations. In our case, we're talking about the TEP translations we have produced against which the MT output and post-editing output are compared. The quality of data, are the data representative? We need to have the quality of data used in the real setting. In domain, we examine and analyze the complexity of the domain, in our case, software or electronics. Representative volume of words. The test set volume is approximately 2000 words. The more words we include, the more reliable the results will be. And the examination of the MT system. We need to consider if the output is produced by an SMT or an NMT system notify the post editors regarding this detail 
and predict the most probable type of errors the specific system produces. After checking the test set, it is also important to check the tools and the environment available. For our productivity test, MT, TM, glossaries, and style guides are materials that should be made available and implemented in order to have optimized results. MT is normally integrated into TM tools, and it is important to use realistic tools and environments. Based on the language resources available, before starting, we should prepare a post-editing protocol and agree on this with the customer. Post-editing's principle is that the deliverable should be comparable to TEP. However, measurements and local specific punctuation, date formats, inconsistencies in terminology, proper names, product names, and other do not translate elements, duplicates, and many more are not in the scope of the post-editing service. These are specific guidelines that need to be agreed with the customer. So we need to bridge the gap between the post editor and the final target audience. And the way to do that is a common post editing protocol. This protocol constitutes our agreement on the final deliverable and helps us eliminate some of the gray areas, the gray areas of the post editing process. So let's go to the human factor, uh, the post editors. The number of post editors is important in order to obtain objective results. It is obvious that the productivity varies by post editor depending on their technical and cognitive background. This variation is reflected on the temporal line of their post editing activity and the productivity. So this is the reason why the number of post editors is recommended to be four to six according to Taos. In our case study, four different post editors were used per language combination for the productivity test. Now, a common topic of discussion when talking about evaluation of empty output is also the profile of the post editors. Should they be juniors? Should they be experts? And what is their background? Are they translators? Should we use linguists for post editing or maybe just monolingual editors? In our case study, we used a broad group of post editors, setting two basic profiles for the translation and post editing experience. Most of them are freelancers, meaning that they work as permanent employees of the company remotely using the company platform tools and expertise. We did that in order to obtain a more accurate average measurement. Post editors included have the following characteristics. They are professional post editors. The post editors we use have specific training and certification in post editing. They are the best performers from the pool of post editors. We monitor and evaluate our post editor productivity in terms of productivity and quality. For this case study, we used our best performers to secure optimized results. They should be domain specialists from the pools of post editors. So we used native post editors who have expertise in the specialization field with either a translation degree and at least five years of experience in the technical translation of documents in the field of software and electronics with at least one year of experience in post editing or a degree in IT, computer science, or constructions, and at least five years of experience in translation, with at least one year of experience in post editing. Let's check now the quality of the translation test. There are different methods on quality evaluation. We use the human evaluation with structured feedback on common errors using the linguistic quality assurance model or LQA by Taos. Taos has adopted an industry standard error typology, which is the DQF-MQM harmonized model. This is something known in the industry, and you can see this model on this slide. LQA is enabled to undertake accuracy, fluency, terminology, verity, style, local convention, and design evaluation, along with error typology review. 
A quality review consists of two main activities, flagging errors in a segment and correcting errors. So after having analyzed these points, let's go and check our case study. Our case study has two parts addressing two customer requests. Let's start with the first one. How can we evaluate the productivity rate in one specific specialization field and translate this into cost and time reduction? The first part of our case study is the key to this question. Here you can see our productivity test template. We include all the information needed, subject, language combination, translation memories, and other tools used, content and content classification. In the second half of the template, there are the fields of the comparative analysis. The comparative analysis compares raw MT output, MT and TM trained engine output, light post-editing and full post-editing against TEP. The result is the effort in relation to TEP. TEP is 100%, meaning that full post-editing is a certain percentage of the TEP's effort. To make it clearer, the evaluation process was performed following these steps. We performed TEP to achieve the highest possible quality level of translation, and we used TEP as the highest quality reference step. Then we performed four separate translation outputs to be benchmarked against the TEP. Raw MT output, MT and TM strained engine output, light post-editing and full post-editing. Now you can see the template completed with, with all the data and the results. The subject is a comparative analysis between empty output, trained engine output, light post-editing, full post-editing, and TEP. The language combination in this case is English, US to French Canadian. The translation memory provided contained 28,000 translation units. The tools used were MemSource, SMT Microsoft Hub, Empty Trained Engine by Inter Translations, custom-made software developed by Indoor Translations, SDL Trados Multiterm, and SDL Trados Studio. The content was 2,085 words, and the content classification was software. As you can see at the first glance, the raw MT output is 70% of the TEP's effort. Then the MT and TM strained engine output is 71% of the TEP's effort. We notice here that the effort for MT and TM strained engine output is higher than the 70% effort for raw MT output. This is because we used only 28,000 translation units. We will check the results in detail in the next slides. It's also useful to see that the light post-editing effort is very close to the full post-editing effort, 69 and 63% accordingly. So in this case, we have to ask ourselves if it is useful to use light post-editing in this case. To better visualize these figures, this slide shows a comparison chart with track changes shown where post-editing is evolved. So we have the source, we have the output, the Bing output, which is the raw empty output, the custom hub column, which shows the deviations from the Bing output with track change zone, light post-editing column, and the full post-editing performed with track changes to show additions and deletions. The last column is the TEP, which means that it is the translated document, as this was revised with the track change zone to show the modifications. Now the benchmark results. In brief, and according to the table of the template, we can observe one interesting point. The raw MT output is of better quality than the trained engine's output. And why is that? This is because not enough translation units were imported into the TMs. Microsoft Translator Hub Custom Statistical Machine was trained with 28,000 translation units. 
Microsoft suggests at least 100,000 translation units, and based on our internal R&D, more than 500,000 translation units are needed to optimize the results. The important point, which uh, has a direct impact on time and cost, is that the full post editing is at the rate of 63% of the TEP respective effort. Light post editing results show that this service of light post editing is not recommended in this case. So here we can see the results. The results are interpreted along three vectors. The first is the cost factor. Based on the results, using full post editing, a discount of 30% of the TEP rate can be set as a start point immediately. The discount will be increasing in midterm and will be directly proportional with the feeding of the translation memories. So let's see the following. Translation memories are like children. The more we take care of them, the more we invest in their needs and talents, the better the opportunities they get to grow and be successful professionals in their adult lives. The same goes for the translation memories. The more we feed them with data, the bigger the discount and the return on investment we will have over the time. The second is the time factor. Time and money are in direct correlation. Therefore, a 30% decrease in time could be as well anticipated. Of course, time must be invested in ongoing engine training and proper feeding of the translation memories. Depending on the projected volumes, we may reach a point at which we may be able to provide the service even at no cost. And the third is the quality factor. Based on ISO 18587 for the post-editing services, the results of the FPE are comparable to the one provided by TEP from human translators. Taking into account the cost, the time, and the quality, all these factors, we reach a real pricing example. So the customer source document for English into French Canadian is 2,085 words. Using full post editing, the offer would be discounted by 30% in comparison with the TEP rate. Now, let's check the second part of our case study and the second customer request. How can we compare two different engines in three specialization fields and get results in terms of productivity, cost, time, and quality? The second part of the case study is a more complex productivity test performed with a comparison of Google MT and customer MT against TEP for three different specialization fields and combined with a, combi with a quality test. The fields of the template are identical in the upper part, whilst in the comparative analysis, the evaluation refers to the average reduction versus TEP per subject field under the consensus view that TEP is 100%. Here we have a brief description of uh, the evaluation process. The first part is the process producing the productivity report. We consider TEP as the highest quality reference TEP. We measured and estimated a TEP productivity rate of 300 words per hour. We performed two separate post-editing outputs, full post-editing of raw Google MT and full post-editing of the customer's MT trained engine. Then we compared these post-editing outputs and benchmarked them against the TEP in three specialization fields, UA, legal, marketing, beginning with a test set of 2,000 words. The second part is the process producing the, LQ, the LQA reports. Again, TEP is considered as the highest quality reference TEP. And for the LQA, we set a maximum productivity of 1,000 words per hour for post-editing free of errors. And this is a condition for our evaluation. Furthermore, we performed two separate LQAs in three specialization fields for seven language combinations. LQA for, of raw Google MT post editing in 500 words and LQA of customers MT post editing in 500 words as per TAUS. 
Here we can see how the template of this second part of the case study is depicted. The subject is, first part, productivity report based on a comparative analysis between raw Google MT and customers trained engine MT and full post editing of raw Google MT and full post editing of the customers trained engine MT. Second part, LQAs for raw Google MT and LQAs for customers trained engine MT. The language combinations are English into German, Spanish, Italian, Japanese, Portuguese, Chinese, and French. No TMs or other material were provided for this case study. The tools used are MemSource, raw Google MT, MT trained engine by the customer, custom made software developed by Intertranslations, and SDL Trader Studio. The content volume is 2000 words again, but in three text types, UA, marketing, and legal in the field of electronics. At the first glance, raw Google MT proves a higher average reduction in comparison with the customer's MT in all three fields. So let's go and check the results of this comparison in detail per MT engine, language combination, and text type. Here you can see the productivity report for the technical text, the UA. There is a recording of the productivity rate in words per hour for Google MT and customer MT with their respective reduction percentage versus step. The results show that there is no clear indication as to whether Google MT output or customer MT output is better in terms of productivity. For some language combinations like German, Spanish, Italian, Japanese, Google MT output comes first, while for Portuguese and French, customer MT output seems to be slightly better. The productivity rates are interpreted in reduction percentage versus step. For the legal documents, the productivity rate is higher in all language combinations in comparison with the UA documents. We also see that there is no difference between Google MT and customer MT results for Portuguese, Chinese, and French. For the rest of the language combinations, German, Spanish, and Japanese work better with Google MT, while Italian works better with customer MT. Marketing documents. Marketing documents prove to have more or less the same productivity rates as the legal documents. However, in this case, the Google MT proves to give a better output in most cases. Benchmark results. In brief, raw Google MT exceeds the average productivity of customers MT by 2.3%. We have already stated in the first part of our case study that raw Google MT can be trained with the translation units of the customer's TM and reach a satisfactory level when 100,000 translation units will be imported into the TMs. The other point which has a direct impact on time and cost is that the full post editing is at the average rate of 50% of the TEP respective effort. The specialization fields do not prove to have great difference in terms of cost and time in this case. However, we have an important fact. Post-editing of legal documents proves to have a better return than the post-editing of UA documents. Post-editing of marketing documents proves to have better return than the post-editing of UA documents. And finally, UA documents have the lowest return. This means that there is no limitation for post-editing. Marketing and legal documents can be efficiently post-edited, bringing a good reduction in time and cost in comparison with TEP. We should also consider the fact that the customer has not provided us with details regarding the number of translation units used to train their MT engine or the quality of the translation units used to train the MT engine, and no glossaries were available in this case. 
This prevents us from reaching conclusions regarding the maximum achievable improvement of the customer's MT and maximum achievable reduction in terms of time and cost. This is something that probably we could evolve in the future. So here are our conclusions and uh, the interpretation of the results. The cost factor based on the results using full post-editing, a discount of 50% of the TEP rate can be set as a starting point immediately. And this discount may increase in midterm and will be again directly proportional with the feeding of the translation memories. The time factor, time and money are again in direct correlation. So we expect a 50% decrease in time as well. And for quality, as we already said, based on ISO 18587 for the post-editing services, the result of the FPE must be comparable to the one provided by TEP from human translators. And here is our real pricing example for the second part of the case study. The customer source UA document from English into French is 1,921 words. And using FPE, the offer would be discounted by 50%. Now let's see how the quality evaluation was performed and how this was correlated with the productivity evaluation. The quality measurement was based on the LQA process by TAUS, DQE. LQAs were performed for raw Google MT and customers trained engine MT for seven language combinations and three different specialization fields. As an example, you can see the template used for the legal documents. The size was 30% of the total size of the file to be post-edited. And uh, the section of 500 words for LQA was randomly selected. So here you can see the template we use for the classification of errors. The first column is for the file name or the segment number, and the columns following are for the target, the suggested target, the error category, error subcategory, specify other for any other comment or category, and severity. So in the next slides, I present the comprehensive tables containing productivity results reports and the LQA results reports for Google MT and customers MT for all seven language combinations and three specialization fields. Here you may see the language quality assessment for UA documents. The template has the following fields, source, target, number of errors in LQA for Google MT, number of errors in LQA for customer MT, and the respective productivity rate for Google MT and customer MT based on the number of the errors produced. The same assessment was used for the legal documents. Based on this report, we may conduct ob observations regarding the complexity of language combinations which is demonstrated by the number of errors and performance of the different MT system for MT engine, language combination, and specialization field. And last, we perform the LQA assessment for the marketing documents. Based on the LQA results and the estimation of errors in LQA, a comparison between the two different MT systems is feasible. The productivity results of the productivity test are cross-checked and verified with the use of the number of errors in the LQAs. This means that the evaluation output of the productivity test, which is the result of time measurement, coincides with the evaluation output of the LQI test, which is the result of quality measurement based on the number of errors. So let's have an overview of the results and what are the benefits of this method? The benefits of the TEPQ evaluation method concern cost, time, and quality. Regarding time, we can set the realistic turnaround time expectations. When it comes to cost, we apply a reliable pricing method for MTPE, which is based on the concreteness of TEP. 
This method makes it possible to apply appropriate pricing structure for specific content types and language pairs. Pricing will change though each time we have a new version of the engine and whenever this is evaluated and deployed. The model and method used in our case studies are probably and obviously transparent. And uh, when talking about quality, quality is comparable to TEP based on ISO 18587. Quality improves as long as the LQA feedback is taken into account to improve the source quality for machine translation post editing. And of course, the last steps of, of this evaluation method are to reflect all the above in an SLA, a service level agreement, and agree on a post-editing protocol with the customer to handle known problem areas which are not actually in the scope of post-editing in order to facilitate the procedure. And these are handling of measurements and local specific punctuation and date formats, correcting inconsistencies in terminology, handling of proper names, product names and other not translate elements, removing duplicates, fixing omissions, morphology agreement, negations, word order, plural versus singular, etc. So TEPQ is uh, our reliable method to train, evaluate, prove and qualify. And we hope you found our approach and case study interesting. Thanks. So thank you for your time today. And you may find my contact details on this slide. I will be happy to answer any questions you may have now. Thank you so much, Viveta, for this really detailed and interesting discussion of what you've done. And thank you for sharing it with our audience. Um, let's start with a, a, a general question, and that is, how many days does it actually take to do such an evaluation? This uh, uh, took, uh, it was for the first part, part uh, like uh, seven days, and uh, for the second part, 10 days. Okay, that's considerable. Um, we also have uh, a couple of uh, concrete questions. I think they're just clarification questions. When you begin to talk about the, give us a brief description of the evaluation process, uh, one person would like to know uh, that whether you're measuring the time. So for PE and for TEP, uh, was that 30% faster? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, and uh, you said 2K words for each field, so each meaning here, legal, marketing, UA, is that correct? Yes, we had 2,000 words per field, per specialization field. Okay, okay, uh, thank you. And then uh, what type of legal text did you actually use, like contracts or certificates or something else? It was of the type of contracts, let's say, not not demanding legal text. This is just to say, it was like standardized legal text. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not court documents. This is what I mean. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Um, how are post editors trained? What is their training? Okay. So there, we have our internal procedure of training. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a specific uh, module for post-editing. Then we have uh, the theoretical and the practical, like the one existing uh, by TAUS. And of course, there is the TAUS certification, and most of the post-editors take this uh, certification. And for uh, some projects, this is a prerequisite to start working with us. I see. So very thorough. Um, thank you. Um, you know, if I work in a company and we got a similar case, can I send you our files and, and you take you do that evaluation for my company? Yes, of course, we can do this and repeat this for anyone who is interested in that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, how much time uh, does it take to become a, a trained post editor? Okay, this... Uh, Post editing, okay, to, to have the certification, it is only about, let's say, 15 days to one month, depending on the schedule uh, the post editor, they, the candidate post editor has. But to become a real post editor, you need to specialize in a specific domain and then start working um, more and more and produce volumes 
in order to be really uh, trained. I mean, the more you, you post edit, the better you become. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, it looks like those are all of the questions uh, that came in from the audience. Um, I'll leave it open for just another minute in case somebody else has something else that they want to follow up on. Um, but if not, uh, again, Viveta, thank you so much for laying it all out for us. It is super helpful to have concrete data um, available. Oh, and here comes another question. Um, do you use Taos LQA for qualifying internal post editors? For qualifying internal post editors, you mm -hmm. said? Oh, po post editing materials. Yes, for post editing material, this is what we use. We use LQA, which is right now a very good template and form to do that, mm -hmm. but um, not for the training of the post editors. For the training of post editors, we have our own mm -hmm. processes and yeah. procedures. Yes, yes, thank you so much. Um, do you train your post editors to use the most of the empty output, or do you train them to make all changes that are needed to achieve parity with human quality? This means that if we train them in order to have the maximum productivity, in, mm -hmm. um, uh, but not at the level, at the quality level, something like that, if we prioritize the speed mm -hmm. and not the quality, if it is that, no, we prioritize uh, the quality. But mm -hmm. this, because post-editing post -editing is comparable to TEP, as we said. So the results should be accurate and fluent. First, we have a sample of the empty output. We evaluate it, we check the, the productivity rate, and then we go and set a deadline for the specific project. So we will not sacrifice the quality of step which we should have out of the procedure of uh, of post editing uh, in order to have uh, more speed unless we talk about a light post editing or there is a specific agreement with the customer and mm -hmm. the service is customized yeah absolutely so yeah if there's a different request you you may uh, optimize for speed but otherwise um, it will be for quality mm -hmm. um, how do you, let me just take a look at this one here. Um, how do you measure the differences between PE and TEP? Do you actually use at a distance? We uh, use the comparison. Uh, so yes, we may use at a distance, but we use the comparison. I mean, uh, what are the differences, the deletions, additions, all the processes of the post editor in order to realize the quality differences and uh, the, the time measurement. So it's also calculating the time, first of all, and then, yes, the additions, deletions, and what happens while uh, the post editor uh, post edits. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Um, again, uh, Viveta, thank you so much for sharing uh, this with us today. Um, and, and thank you uh, for the audience, for all of your uh, good questions. Um, for our audi audience, uh, we would really appreciate it if you could take just a moment to give us your feedback on today's session using the post-event survey, which will, uh, I believe, pop right up. It's short, but your perspectives really help us to continue to uh, refine uh, our webinar program. Uh, and with that, I wish you a good evening, uh, Viveta, in Greece, uh, and uh, I wish you a good evening or a good day, depending on where you are, and I hope to see you at an, another gala webinar soon. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.